Student's Book, page 60. 8. The School of Science Sarah and Sam are twins, and they go to the School of Science. Students at the School of Science have really unusual lessons. In Monday's first lesson, the twins were learning about their hands. Their teacher, Mr. Basket, wanted the class to see their hands in a different way. Right, students, he said. Some of you might be doctors, dentists, or engineers in the future, so in this lesson, I'd like each student to put their left hand inside this special X-ray machine. I invented it last term. Look at your hand through the screen, and you'll see something that's very exciting. Most of Sarah's classmates put their hands in and took them out again very quickly. But Sarah didn't. It's so interesting, she said. I can see all of my bones. That's enough time, Sarah, Mr. Basket said. When Sarah took her hand out, she could still see all of the bones in her fingers. They were blue. Don't worry, Sarah, Mr. Basket said. Your fingers will be okay again by tea time. In the second lesson, Mrs. Poole said, Some of you might be science journalists, cooks, or restaurant managers in the future. So I'd like you to make a special kind of chocolate that helps people to remember things. Mrs. Poole gave the class coffee beans and milk, pepper, lime juice, and something grey to mix together over a small fire. But you can't eat it until next week, students, Mrs. Poole said. The chocolate was really hot, but Sam couldn't wait. I'm going to try it now. It smells amazing, he whispered to his sister. Wow, 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 he said when he tasted it. June the 11th, Grandma's Strawberry Milkshake. What's the matter with your brother, Sarah? Mrs. Poole asked a minute later. His face looks different. It's orange. He's just remembering all the dates when someone gave him something really delicious, Mrs. Poole. Sarah said. Oh, all right. Mrs. Poole answered. So you ate some of the chocolate, Sam? Well, don't worry. You'll be okay again by dinner time. In the third lesson, Mr. Spot said, Some of you might be mechanics, astronauts, or designers in the future. So I want to show you this amazing glue. It can repair anything. He said, but you must use these special brushes with it, and don't drop any of the glue on your feet. It glues things too well to feet. Why? Well, I don't understand that yet. So, work carefully. While the twins were gluing some broken bits of glass together, Sarah's brush suddenly got too heavy and she dropped it. The brush fell onto her right foot and stuck to her toes. Sarah was trying to pull it off when Mr. Spot said, Don't worry, Sarah. It'll come off later. Everything will be okay again by bedtime. After lunch, in Mrs. Wetter's class, the students learned about ice. Some of you might build bridges or be geography teachers or pilots in the future, so you need to know about ice and water. When you mix white salt with ice, the ice changes back to water, she said. But this special kind of salt changes ice into much more water and does it really quickly. She pointed to a small box of green and silver salt 
and a large piece of ice that were on her desk. Don't touch anything while I go and get a towel. We might need one, Mrs. Wetter said, and ran out of the classroom. Sarah said, "I've got an idea, Sam. Hold the ice above your head. I'll stand on a chair behind you. Let's see if this special salt really works." Sam laughed and said, "Okay, quick, before Mrs. Wetter comes back." The special salt worked very well. Oh. I see you've had a shower, Sam," Mrs. Wetter said when she came back. She gave him the towel. "Don't worry, you'll be dry again by midnight." When the children arrived home, the fingers on Sarah's left hand were still blue, and the brush was still glued to her toes. Sam's face was still a strange orange color. He was still remembering delicious food dates, and his hair was still wet. When their mother saw them, she said, "So you had fun at school today. What are you going to do tomorrow?" Sam looked in his school diary. "We're going to watch a video about the dark side of the moon." And invent some medicine that makes hair grow really long in about an hour," he said. "We're going to write a computer program for the new school robot too," Sarah added. "But we don't know about the afternoon lessons yet. We might go on a dinosaur ride." "Fine," their mother answered. "Right. Go and change your clothes. Let's have some tea." What have we got? Asked Sam. On the ninth of January last year, you made a lovely kiwi cheesecake. Did I, Sam? His mother said. Well, today we'll have carrot biscuits and fish milkshakes, and meatball and tomato sauce sandwiches for dinner. The twins' mother was an unusual cook. She went to the School of Science when she was young too. Hi, kids. I'm Professor Hester. Welcome to my lab. Here, we use science to learn how the world works. We do that by conducting experiments, or as I call them, Professor Hester's testers. <laughs> hey, that rhymes. The Hester's tester for today. The superpower of water. That's right. Plain old water has a superpower. It can change into three different forms. The first form is water as a liquid. This is the form you know the best. When water is a liquid, you can drink it, take a bath in it. Play in it. Swim in it. The second form is water as a solid. What happens when water gets really cold? That's right. After a little time, it freezes. Snow and ice are really just solid water. Isn't that amazing? When water is solid, you can skate on it, ski on it, build snowmen with it, even make a work of art with it. For this next part, I'll need a little help. <laughs> This is Jester, my science partner. He's a Labrador Retriever. Professor Hester and her dog Jester. <laughs> hey, another rhyme. We've seen what happens when water gets very cold, but what happens if water gets very hot? It turns into its third form, 
water as a gas. This one is a bit trickier to explain, so move in close. Closer. Closer. Now, when solid water is heated, it melts into liquid water. When liquid water is heated, it turns into gas. You can't see that gas because it's invisible. But even if you can't see the gas, you can hear it. Listen, as the gas rushes out of the teapot, it, it... <laughs> That's right, Jester, it whistles. When that hot gas goes outside the teapot, some of it cools off and turns back into water as a liquid, which we see as steam. Look for yourself. The steam we see is made of tiny, tiny drops of water. Actually, liquid water doesn't have to get really hot to turn into gas. Here's an experiment that you can do at home. Yesterday, I filled this glass to the very top with water and left it on the table. Now some of the water is gone, and it's not because Jester drank it. <laughs> That liquid water turned into gas and went into the air. <laughs> Thank you, Jester. Here's something else you can try at home. Your breath contains water as a gas, but you can't see your breath. Or can you? Breathe on a mirror. <sighs> see how the mirror fogs up? That's water changing from gas to liquid right before your eyes. Isn't that amazing? Water is everywhere!